Propro Gabi Dominus Ipse Vobisignum. Et se virgo concibi et et pari et filium. Evocabi tu nomen eos Emanuel. Utrum et melcom et id. Ucia reprobare malum et eligere bonum.
Musus es Angelus Gabriel Deo gibit in gibitatem Galilei cui nomen Nazaret, arbitrum responsatum viro cui nomen eratiose, de domo David et nomen Virginis Maria. Et ingressus Angelus adeam dixi, ave gratia plena Dominus tecum, meredicta tue mole eribus. Quae cum audis et trucrota est in the sermone eius, et cogitaba qualis es et ista salotatio. Et aed angelus ei, ne timias Maria, in venisenum gratiam apoteum, et ce concipies in uter, et ce concipies in utero, et parias filium, et vocabis nomineus Jesum. Igari magnus et filius altissimi vocabitur et David ili Dominus Deus et et gravi patris eius et regnavit in domo Iacob in aeternum et regnaeus non erit finis. Dixit autem Maria Arangelum comoro fiedis tu de quoniam virum non gaios co et respondens Angelus Dixit ei Virtus Sancto superveni et in de, et virtus altissimi obum bravi tibi. Idioque et quod nascetur ex te sanctum, vocabitur filius dei. Et ecce Elisabeth coniata tua, et ipse a concepit filium in sene tute sua, et igmensis sexus estili, que vocator sterilis, Quia non ed in possibili apu Deum omne verbum. Dixit autem Maria et Giangela Domini, Quia mici secondum verbum Duvum. Feast of the Annunciation of Our Lady, and uh, here at the seminary today we'll make our consecration of each individual uh, priest and seminarian here at the seminary to the Blessed Virgin Mary renewal, and also making the first consecration of, uh, for some, of to Our Lady and to the Manor of St. Louis de Montfort on this Feast of the Annunciation, so this uh, great feast. And this epistle for this Feast of the Annunciation, taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7. In those days the Lord spoke unto Acha, saying, As thee a sign of the Lord thy God, either unto the depth of hell or the height above, 
And Achaiah said, I will not ask, and I will not tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye therefore, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to be grievous to men, that you are grievous to my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. He shall eat butter and honey, that he may know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. And in the Gospel, he's taking that according to St. Luke chapter 1. At that time the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel being come in said unto her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Who having heard was troubled at his saying and thought with her, with her, with her in herself what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found grace with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God shall give unto him the, the throne of David his father. And he shall reign in the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how shall this be done, because I know not man? And the angel answering and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall overcome thee, the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee, and therefore also the Holy which shall be born in of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she also hath conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, that is called barren, because no word shall be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold the hand of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. And the Father, and the Holy Ghost, amen. We're in a time in which there are so many millions and millions of needs, so many necessities. In fact, every problem that has ever existed in the history of man exists now. Every difficulty of the mind, every difficulty of the heart, every difficulty of the body, every difficulty of the city, every difficulty of the nation, every difficulty of the church, every difficulty found in the friends and the enemies of God alike, all of which receive the grace of God, even his enemies, Everyone is receiving a greater amount of temptation, a greater amount of struggles, and there are greater necessities than at any other time in history. And so, where do we begin? If you go to a man on the side of the street who's dying, he needs, what does he need? He needs faith for his mind, he needs charity for his heart, he needs hope for his whole being, he needs all of the virtues, he needs food, he needs shelter, he needs a father, he needs a mother. He needs health of mind and body, and of his spirit, and of his passions. He needs an infinite number of things. Which one do we ask for first? St. Louis de Montfort says that the one who answers all needs is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And since we have so many needs, what are we to do? Which one do we ask for? My like Father Hugo always says, "Tell me the seven main, give me the seven main reasons why you like pizza over beer. <laughs> give me the six main reasons why you think Bishop Fillet did this. Give me the four main reasons for this and the three main reasons for that. And which are the three main reasons? Which are the six main reasons? Which are the five main reasons? Which are the nine main reasons? Which one do we mention first? We don't know. And we have an example of this in the book of Isaiah. But Achaz is sick. And Achaz wants to be better. <coughs> the king. And so in order to say, how do I know I'm going to get better? How do I know I'm going to get better? How do I know God is going to hear my prayer? And therefore Isaiah the prophet says to him, well, ask a sign. Ask a sign from the depths of hell below. 
or ask a sign in the height of heaven above. Ask a sign anywhere and anything. A few years earlier, there was a prophet, a judge. And he was told by God, ask a sign. And Gideon said, well, let there be dew that falls on my body. And I'll rather dew falls on the ground all around me when I wake up in the morning, but no dew is on me. And so he went to sleep at night, and the ground was filled with dew. And he got up, and he was completely dry. And what did he say? He said, well, that was a good sign, but I think I want another sign. So he asked for a second sign. Even though he received the sign that he asked for, he said, it's easy that maybe there's some natural explanation why the dew <coughs> didn't land on me. So therefore, I'll ask a second sign, just to make sure. And this sign shall be, <clears throat> let all the dew fall on me, and let all the ground be dry around me. And so the sign was given. Moses was told what to do, and he said, I can't do it. Gideon asked for a sign, then he asked for another sign. And also the man always dealing with the... Um, uh, of the old, of the other, the lady, the lady judge in the Old Testament. Do you want a woman to go with you? Yes, I do. He needed help. But what about Achaz? Achaz was not a saint. Achaz was not a prophet. He was a weak king, and he was did not know what to do. And so God said to him, "Ask a sign. I demand of you to ask a sign." And he said, "I'm not going to tempt the Lord my God." And then God became angry. And he communicated to Isaiah, is this the way that you treat men? You treat men this way? Is this the way you treat God? Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, either, uh, either under the depth of hell or the height above. And Achaz said, I will not ask, and I will not tempt the Lord. Why did he say this? Because he's holy? No, because he didn't know what to ask for. Do I ask for the million dollars? Do I ask for... Uh, you know, uh, a, a, a lightning earthquake, do I ask for all my enemies to be destroyed? Do I ask for a big wall to be built around the fort? He didn't know what to ask for. So he thought it revert to, I will not tempt the Lord thy God. It wasn't because he was a saint. He didn't know what to ask for because he had too many things to ask for. I will not tempt, I will not ask, and I will not tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye therefore, O house of David. Says Isaiah, is it a small thing for you to be grievous to men? And you are grievous to my God also. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. And he shall eat butter and honey, that he may know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. There are advantages of not asking from this, St. Louis de Montfort tells us, what do we want? Whatever the Virgin wants for us. What do we desire? Whatever she wants. Sometimes when we're young children, we go into the kitchen. And mommy says, what do you want for dinner? What do you want for dinner? What do you want for dinner? What do you want for your birthday? And very often we say, anything, Mom, doesn't matter. And why do we say that? Because we're lazy. And mom gets mad. We don't say it because we're saints. We say it because we're lazy. We don't say it because we're indifferent. It's just like when you order for the pizza. What do you want on your pizza? When they got all the college students order pizza. What do you want on your pizza? Oh, I don't care. Then the pizza comes. I don't like anchovies. What did you get anchovies for? Why did you put green peppers with brown slime? What kind of garbage is this? And they complain about all the choices. But before the choice is made, oh, I don't anything is fine with me. I don't care. This was the holiness of Achaz. <laughs> that is why Isaiah is angry with him. And he says, are you tempting the Lord thy God? You're such a wimp, you can't even come up with something. <coughs> but then the Lord gives a sign. And this sign is given to us in our times. Because we don't know what to ask for. We don't know what we need. We don't know where we should be. We don't know what to do. <coughs> Because we have too many needs and too many places and too many things. Therefore, let the Lord give the sign. And the sign is the most beautiful of all signs. And he says that a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. 
And he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. St. Louis of Montfort tells us there are few that understand this. And then one of the greatest difficulties in the true devotion of the Blessed Virgin Mary for many people is, I don't want to give up. I offer to thee my every thoughts, my words, my deeds, all my good works, all my actions, all my intentions, everything I give to thee. Well, I want to control them. I want to decide where they go. But the fact is, we don't know. And what is it that we want? We don't always want what's best for us. We don't always want what's going to make us happy. We don't always want what's right. We often want the wrong thing first, in the wrong order. But if we want whatever the Holy Mother wants, if we want what the Virgin wants, she will always make sure we get everything we need in the order that we need it. And she told St. Maximilian Colby, Maximilian Colby always said, I do whatever the light lady wants. But he always had to build a new printing press and build something new or do some new thing, always working, and always ran out of money. And she said one time to Our Lady, he said, Mary, what a, what, I need more. How am I going to build this big printing press? How am I going to print millions of copies of, the, of spreading the devotion of the Immaculata to the whole world? I need more money. And she said, how can you receive a second plate of food unless you eat the first. You still have five dollars in the bank. You must first spend what you have, then I can give you more. And if you don't eat all you have, I cannot give you more. And so we must give all, and then she will give more. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, all other things shall be added unto you besides. We are in the great <coughs> battle. The very great battle at the end of times. Battle of heaven versus hell. hell. The heel of the Virgin Mary versus the head of the serpent. And the heel will win. And heaven will win. But how is it explained that victory will come? The Blessed Virgin Mary told uh, Mother Mariana in Quito, Ecuador, when things are at their darkest, I will have my victory and I will defeat the devil. And she describes it in a most marvelous way. What is this most marvelous way? She doesn't tell us what it is. She doesn't tell us her battle tactics. Notice when the Blessed Virgin Mary herself was 15 years old, and the Holy Ghost overshadowed her, and the angel told her that she would be the mother of God. She did not ask, how am I going to get Joseph? Joseph is stubborn. Joseph is thick-headed. How am I going to get Joseph to move to Bethlehem? Because the prophecy says he must be born in Bethlehem and Joseph won't move. And if he's not born in Bethlehem, there goes the prophecy. How are the prophecies going to be fulfilled? How this, how that? Are you going to tell St. Joseph what's going on? She asked no questions. She simply said, Ecce on Chila Domini, Fiat, Miki Secundum Verbum Tum. And when she said fiat, what was done? Let it be done unto me according to thy word. What was done? What was done unto the Blessed Virgin Mary is done unto all. And at the end of the passage of Isaiah, this shall be the sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. He shall eat butter and honey, that he may know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. From this we understand the doctrine of the mediatrix of all graces. One of the passages of scripture are about it. How do we know to refuse evil? How do we know to choose good? How do we get the strength to refuse evil? How do we get the strength to choose good? Only from the virgin that conceived a son, who is God with us. And how did God get with us? How did God become with us? Only because she said fiat. It was the most important word ever spoken in the history of the world. And it was the answer to the word spoken by Satan when he said, No serviam. His answer should have been fiat. But instead he said, Non serviam. When God said it would become man. He said, I will not serve such a God. Non serviam. Michael did not know the answer either. So he responded, Who is like unto God? But the Blessed Virgin Mary knew the answer. She knew the answer the angels didn't know. Fiat. Let it be done. What is done? What does God do? 
We read in the book of Genesis, and God saw that what he did was good. St. Leo has a sermon today about this goodness of God. And he says, what happened? Lucifer deceived Eve. And Lucifer deceived Adam through Eve. And he saw that man was given such an honor that God will become man. He saw that man was given such an honor that he would be the ruler of the whole human, of all of the world, of the entire universe. That he was given the honor to be above the angels. And yet, he would sin. And therefore, Lucifer stepped back in hell, says St. Leo. He stepped back. And he said, now that, that, God, that Adam has sinned, now that Eve has sinned, God will become angry, and God will justly curse them, and God will justly destroy them. And he was rejoicing in hell at the suffering of Adam and Eve, at the condemnation of Adam and Eve. But then St. Leo says, but God's will and God's goodness can never be separated. God's will and God's goodness can never be torn apart. God's will and God's goodness are the same. <clears throat> what is the will of God? Your sanctification. <clears throat> what is the will of God? That light give light. That dogs be dogs in the perfect manner. That rocks be rocks. That men be men. Who are made to know, love, and serve God in this world. That spread His holy kingdom so that they might be happy with Him in the next. And is the sin of Adam enough to stop God from being good? Is the sin of Adam enough to stop him to change his will? And St. Leo says, God does not change his will. He has willed to pour goodness into man, and man spit upon that goodness. He has willed to pour goodness into Eve, and Eve spit upon that goodness. He's willed to pour his goodness into this world, and has been spit upon, and has been rejected. Will he therefore change his will? He never will. God does not change. Therefore, he spoke immediately to Adam and Eve and told them there will come a Savior. There will be a new Adam who will fix all the troubles of Adam. There will be a new Eve who will repair all the troubles of Eve, only they will not repair it. It will be like it says in the Holy Mass, Mirabilius reformasti, more wonderfully it shall be recreated. So much so that we'll say this next week in the Exultet, the most beautiful poem of the church, O Felix culpa, O happy fault of Adam, O certe necessari ade peccati, O certainly necessary sin of Adam. According to, this, according to the Exultet and the Holy Author, when we go to heaven, the first thing we'll do is thank Adam for the original sin. Because of Adam's sin, because of Adam's weakness, we could see much more the great, magnificent, infinite beauty of the goodness of God. And that goodness of God made God the Son become flesh. And the goodness of God made a virgin, a mother. And that mother made Emmanuel to be with us. And he eats butter and honey. And all those that follow Christ eat butter and honey. And they know to, to choose the good, to choose the good, and to refuse the evil. God's goodness cannot be stopped. And what does Our Lady say? All generations shall call me blessed, and his kingdom shall have no end. That's what the angel told her. This son who's inside your womb, he's going to rule on this earth, and his kingdom shall have no end. We are now 2,000 years after that kingdom was established. 2,015 years ago, Christ was conceived and his kingdom was established physically upon this earth. There was a man who is God. The priesthood was, was created on this day, March 25th. God became priest. Man became man and God became united. And Jesus Christ became priest on this day. And the priesthood happened inside of the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And through this priesthood, his kingdom enters into the world. And through this priesthood, the kingdom continues. He is a king and a priest who hangs on the cross. He is a king that rules. And he rules today. When we open up our eyes and look around and see Obama bin Laden and all the evil men of the world. And we see all the power that they seem to have. Who rules the world in 2015? 
Jesus Christ. He rules the world. Who is the one that is protecting the flowers and protecting man and making sure that the just shall be brought unto everlasting salvation? The Blessed Virgin Mary. And when did our Lord say his most beautiful prayer? When he looked up into heaven on a holy Thursday night while the mob was coming to capture him. While he was ready to be crucified. While his mother was becoming the mother of sorrows of the deepest sorrow. While he was sweating blood, about to sweat blood, I thank thee that not one shall be lost. Not one of those that I have loved, not one of those that love me shall be lost. Not one shall perish. Remember when St. Paul got into a shipwreck, night and the day in the sea, over a hundred men on the ship, and no one perished. No one and we see little signs that we mentioned the other day. Little bitty signs in our times, like the pilot on the airplane that crashed in the Hudson River a couple of years ago. He said, one Hail Mary. And not one was hurt. Not one was scratched. Because not one of those that loves Mary, not one of those that is loved by her, not one of those can be harmed. And so therefore it's absolutely essential that we make this consecration or renew it with our hearts. We must be the children of Mary. It is most necessary in our times and all times, but especially in our times. What do we ask for? We shall not tempt the Lord our God. We only ask that the Virgin be with us, that she make Emmanuel inside of us, that she make God be somehow inside of us, that she teach us how to eat butter and honey, that we may refuse evil and choose good. And then what else does it matter? What else do we need? We only need our mother. And she will provide all other things. And remember, how our prayer is heard. Our Lady knows what's in our hearts. She knows what we desire. She knows what we need. She knows it better than us. Therefore, it's most logical thing in the world to make this consecration of St. Louis de Montfort. St. Louis says so many make the first prayer and the first consecration, but so few totally consecrate themselves to the Holy Mother. That's what we must do. We're entering into the great battle. And we are all sinners. We are not like Gideon, who would be a soldier. We're more like Achaz. We are more like the guys who say, I don't care what's on my pizza. We don't know what to ask for because we are too caught up in the world, because we are too weak, because we are too foolish, because we don't know what is important and what is not important. And therefore, when we ask, we'll ask certainly for the wrong things. We'll ask certainly in the wrong way. And this is what our Lord taught His apostles. When they met Him, St. John the Baptist told the apostles on the third day, Peter, James, and John, go follow Him. And so they went begrudgingly, Master, where dwellest thou? And he said, Come and see. And this is the call of the priest. Come and see. Do we know where it will be? No. And this is important in our sacred times. Our Sister Lefeb asked that each of us members of the society of St. the X consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we consecrate our whole society of St. Pius X and renew this consecration of our little Our Lady of Mount Carmel and our seminary and all of our work to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We renew it. Because she knows what's best for us. She knows how to accomplish what is, what is her will and the will of her son. She knows how to protect us. Therefore, we must renew this consecration. Renew this giving of ourselves to our Holy Mother. It's absolutely essential. It's not at all secondary or accidental. It must be done. It absolutely must be done. And we ask the grace that we really make this consecration with all our hearts and that we try to be faithful to it no matter what difficulties we have. We have to return to the Blessed Virgin. Return to her, return to her, return to her. She knows how to solve all the problems, how to get us through the sorrows of the Triduum, which will be similar to the sorrows of the great chastisement. She all knows how to get through the sorrows of Good Friday. She knows how to make us rightly prepare for the joys of Easter Sunday. She knows how to strengthen us in our weakness. She knows how to make us perfectly happy. She knows exactly how to take care of every detail. And she will make sure that every detail is cared for, including the ones that we have no thought of. And she will never let us suffer too much. 
She will never let us struggle too much. We think we struggle a lot because we're ignoramuses and we're weak and we're wimps. But we don't struggle a lot. And she will make sure that we don't. All we must do is love her. We're now at a time where what is required is a simple fate of a child. We don't need to know all the answers to all of your questions. Unless they know the simple answer, which is Christ is the answer to every question. The Blessed Virgin Mary is the answer to every question. The Holy Mother Church is the answer to every question. Our Holy Faith is the answer to every question. And it's the same answer. It's not four different answers. The same answer. <coughs> and so let's return all our troubles to those answers. And somehow get through the crises and difficulties of our lives. And God will make it possible for there to be warriors of Christ in these time, final times. And so, we pray for the seminary and the seminarians, and for the priests, and for many vocations. And also, we must give great thanks, great thanks. Twenty-four years ago, Archbishop Martel of Feb entered the kingdom of heaven on this day. On the day of the priesthood, the day of the Annunciation, the day of the, of the day that the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary over the serpent... When she said fiat, hell was destroyed. And so we ask the grace to say that same fiat, to come and see what Our Lady has in store for us. <coughs> come and see the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And all we must do is be faithful to her, and we don't know what country we'll be in, what city we'll be in. We used to say always in the old days, join the Society of St. Pius X and see the world. We don't know where we're going to be. We don't know where we're going to be called. But we must go wherever the grace of God calls and wherever the souls are in need and go wherever they want us to go. And there we go. And then Our Lady will make sure that all things are taken care of. She will make sure that there is a victory, that souls are going to be saved, starting with our own. We must love the Blessed Virgin Mary, love our Holy Mother of the Church, and pray for this victory that's going to come very soon. And then we persevere through the chastisement that's going to come upon us. And that uh, many souls be saved and come to the Blessed Virgin Mary and come to the Kingdom of Heaven. As many as possible can either renew their, we can renew the consecration. We'll do it after the, after the, um, uh, the credo. We'll go ahead and make our consecration. The seminarians will come up and kneel in the sanctuary. And then the, uh, uh, they'll sign the papers at the end of the Mass. We'll come to the kneel in the sanctuary. And then at the, at the latter part where, it's, or the, where it says that I, a, uh, uh, a faithless sinner, we say I, then it'll be... Uh, Father Pfeiffer, and then all the way down the line to the hierarchy, to uh, Mr. Bradley there, you know, the communion rail, I, all the way down from the from the top to the bottom, each of us, and say our name individually in the hierarchy, so that myself, then Father Hugo, then, then Dr. Sunil, then down the line, say our complete name, then continue, Faith is Sinner, and uh, that'll be after the credo, and then also pray for the, and others who want to renew their consecration, can say it as well, if they have it with them. But then for the names, it'll be just all of us saying our names out loud. And then uh, the others can say it uh, quietly. And, uh, and then uh, one at a time. And then at the end of the Mass, we'll go ahead and sign the papers. And there'll be a little bitty celebration afterwards on this great day of the Archbishop of Lefebvre's victory, final victory when entering the Kingdom of Heaven. And on this day of the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ also on this day. And, uh, and, and the... And so that uh, the priesthood, the day of the priesthood, and grant that God make us uh, uh, holy priests and uh, faithful priests all the way into eternity. Lord, bless you all, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
living tabernacle of the divinity, where the eternal wisdom dwells to be hidden and to be adored by angels and by men. Hail, Queen of heaven and earth, to whose empire everything is subject, which is of your God. Hail, O sure refuge of sinners, whose source of mercy avails no one, to hear the desires which I have of the divine wisdom, and from that end receive the vows and offerings which in my holiness I present to thee. I, I, Father Joseph Pfeiffer, I, Father David Hugo, I, Father Joseph Pfeiffer, I, Father David Hugo, I, Anthony Schmidt, I, Darren Kishnerian, I, Ramon Valparo Barbosa, I, Brother, I, Brian Fierna, I, Joseph Ortega, I am Michael Bradley. I am Stephen Cook. I am faithful, centered, renewed, and ratified today in the hands of the vows of my baptism. I renounce forever Satan, his palms and works, and I give myself entirely to Jesus Christ, the incarnate wisdom, to carry my cross after him all the days of my life and to be more faithful to him than I have ever been before. In the presence of all the heavenly court, I choose thee this day for my mother and mistress. I deliver and consecrate to thee as thy slave, my body and soul, my goods both interior and exterior, and even the value of all my good actions, past, present, and future, leaving to thee the entire and full right of disposing of me and all that belongs to me without an exception, according to thy good pleasure, for the greater glory of God in time and in eternity. Receive, O Benignant Virgin, this little offering of my slavery, in honor of and in union with that subjection which the eternal wisdom deigned to have to thy eternity, in homage to the power which both of you have over this poor sinner, and in thanksgiving for the privileges with which the Holy Trinity has favored thee. I declare that I wish henceforth, as thy true slave, to seek thy honor and to obey thee in all things. O admirable mother, present me to thy dear son as his eternal slave, so that as he has redeemed me by thee, by thee he may receive me. O mother of mercy, grant that I may obtain the true wisdom of God, and for that end receiving me among those who thou lovest and teachest, whom thou leadest, nourishest, and protectest as thy children and thy slaves. O faithful virgin, make me in all things so perfect and acceptable, and imitator and slave of the incarnate wisdom, Jesus Christ thy Son, that I may attain by that intercession, by that example, to the fullness of his age on earth and of his glory in heaven. Amen.
Romnia secola seculoro. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Storsum cara. Amen. Usat omnium. Gracias a Gavos Domino de.
Eronia secula seculorum. Amen. Oremo, fecia de salutare vos moniti, et divinens lucione formati, audemus dicere, Pate nostre requies in celis, sanctifice tuor nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, Be a volon rastua, si god in cielo et in terra. Anem nostrum quotidianum, da nobis odie, et dimite nobis de vita nostra, si god et nos dimitimus de vitoribus nostris, et de nos inducas in tentazionem. Servirus nomen.
Oh, <laughs> 